Are you also fawning over the two handsome actors of this widely discussed movie, Saltburn? Are you curious to learn some cool words and phrases from this movie? Then join our lesson today and stay until the end to do some exercises. Number one, to fawn over. I loved him, of course. It was impossible not to love Phoenix. And that was part of the problem. Everyone loved him. Everyone wanted to be around him. And exhausted him. People just wouldn't leave him alone. Especially the girls. Christ, the girls. It was embarrassing, really, how everyone fawned over him. To fawn over is to shower someone or something with so much love and attention that is over the top. Now, how can you remember this phrase? Well, this is a fawn. A fawn is a baby deer. Think of Bambi. What do people do when they see Bambi? What is their reaction? That's right, they are so over the moon, they are so in love with it, and they are saying that how cute it is. Well, it's the same with fawn over. After the talent show, the audience couldn't help but fawn over the young singer, showering her with compliments and requests for autographs. In this scene, the narrator talked about how popular the main character Felix is with girls, that they just fawn over him, so they shower him with love and attention. Fawn over. Fawn is a verb and you can use it in different tenses. During the award ceremony, the audience fawned over the talented actress, applauding her every move and praising her exceptional performance. As we speak, journalists and photographers are fawning over the fashion icon on the red carpet, capturing every detail of her glamorous appearance. By this time next week, the media will likely be fawning over the newly released blockbuster movie, praising its captivating storyline and stellar performances. Over. Over. Fawn. Fawn. Fawn over. Fawn over. Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number two, food for thought. Outrageous gallop of lines. And thus, the shape of the verse can be said like Browning's last touches to look as if it were alive. <clears throat> okay. Yep. Very good. Um, yeah, a lot of food for thought there. Intriguing. Just like your stomach needs food, your mind also needs food. So anything that is considered as food for thought is something interesting to think about, like a mental snack that you should digest in your mind. The professor just finished listening to the essay and says that there's a lot of food for thought. Although we can see that he wasn't probably even listening, but he still said that there were many things to think about, that the essay was very intriguing. The documentary presented some compelling arguments on climate change, providing plenty of food for thought. After reading the thought-provoking article, I had a lot of food for thought about the impact of technology on our daily lives. Attending the lecture on philosophy gave me a lot of food for thought about the meaning of life. Okay, now let's say this phrase together. Thought. Thought. A lot. A lot of. A lot of. So try to connect these three words together. A lot of. A lot of food. A lot of food for thought. A lot of food for thought. Now pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number three, to pick apart. Thus. <laughs> hmm? Sorry, uh, just thus. Just a funny word. Why? I don't know. I don't think we really use it in real life, do we? Is this kind of verbose, don't you think? No, not really. No. No, you don't. You used it seven times. No, I didn't. <laughs> yes, you did. I counted. <laughs> He's got you there, I'm afraid, Oliver. <laughs> so you're picking apart the style, may I say, instead of the substance. To pick apart means to closely examine or analyze something by looking at its individual components, details or flaws. It's usually used to mean to criticize in a very detailed way. After watching the movie, we all sat around and picked apart the plot twists and character decisions over pizza and popcorn. In this scene, Farley starts commenting on different things like the use of the word thus. 
So Oliver says that he chose to pick apart the style and not the content of the essay, meaning he decided to question and criticize the use of very specific words and details of the style. In this phrasal verb, pick is the verb and apart is the preposition. You can put them next to each other or you can also separate them by an object. The detective began to pick apart the crime scene, carefully examining every detail for clues. As the debate heated up, each candidate tried to pick apart their opponent's arguments to strengthen their own position. During the book club discussion, the critics picked the author's writing style apart. 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 Pick apart. Pick apart. Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number four, to skive. Yeah, it's a bad luck. I've just been trying to fix it. Yeah, of course, it's when I'm already 10 minutes late for my tutorial. Oh. Where is it? Oh, uh, it's Ifley Road. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm already in it for skiving last week, so... <sighs> to skive is a very British slang that means avoiding work or responsibility by staying away or by leaving without permission. In this scene, Felix is explaining that his bike is broken and he's already late for the university tutorial. And he's frustrated because he already skived last week, so he already didn't go to the tutorial last week, so he doesn't want to miss again. The verb skive we usually use with a preposition off. I often skive off work on Fridays to enjoy a longer weekend. Yesterday, she skived off school and went to the amusement park with her friends. By this time next week, we will be skiving off work and relaxing on a tropical beach vacation. Skive. Skive. Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number five, to owe something. I, this is my fucking hero right here. I was just telling everyone how you saved my ass oh, yesterday. So cute. So cute. Thank you. Wait, take a seat. I owe you a drink. Here, show up, yeah? I'm oh, sorry, are you with friends? Uh, no, they just left. To owe something means that someone else helped you out before and now you need to repay the person. When you say, I owe you a drink, it means that you are giving a friendly promise to get a person a drink as a way to say thank you. Thank you so much for giving me a ride last week. You saved me. No worries at all. I owe you a drink. Felix invites Oliver to join the group and says that he owes Oliver a drink because Oliver had saved him previously. All right, so this phrase you can use in the several ways. You can use a specific word to substitute the word something. For example, a beer or coffee or a meal or anything that you are promising to pay that person back with. But if you're not sure what you want to give back to that person and you just want to say thank you and promise to do something in the future, you can say, I owe you one. I owe you one or I owe you a big one. Thanks for covering my shift at work last minute. I owe you a beer. You saved my day by helping with a car breakdown. I owe you a big one. Thanks for proofreading my essay at the last minute. I owe you a coffee. Let's say this phrase from the movie together. A drink. A drink. Oh. Oh. Owe you. I owe you. I owe you a drink. I owe you a drink. Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number six, to chirps. Catch a tiger by his toe. If he squeals, let him go. You're out, Boy Scout. <laughs> well, what the fuck, mate? I've been chirps here for about an hour. To chirps is another very British slang that means to playfully chat with someone, flirting. Some boy was chirpsing me on the bus. In this scene, we see a girl easily following Felix, even though she was sitting with another guy before. He is frustrated because he had been chirpsing or flirting with her for an hour just for her to leave. Jane chirps her crush every chance she gets. I will chirp that charming colleague when the opportunity arises. Last night, Dan was chirping me and we shared some hilarious stories. Alright, now let's try to say this rather long sentence together. An hour. An hour. 
for about an hour. For about an hour. So connect for and about together. An hour together. For about an hour. I've been chirpsing. I've been chirpsing. I've been chirpsing her for about an hour. I've been chirpsing her for about an hour. Now pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number seven, wrong end of the stick. What's bad for? What do you think? Getting with Venetia, Ollie. What makes you think I got with Venetia? Farley saw you too. Just fucking cringe, mate. I mean, really, you're my friend. You're supposed to be here Look, with me. I didn't want to embarrass Venetia. What do you mean? Well, I saw her. I saw her outside, and I went down to see was she okay, and I think she got the wrong end of the stick because. She tried to kiss me, and I politely stirred her away. Wrong end of a stick is an idiom that means to not understand a situation correctly. Imagine that this end of the stick is the truth, but you accidentally grab the opposite of what you wanted. Usually it's referred to a comical scenario when you find yourself holding the stick upside down, leading to confusion, a good laugh. Felix is angry at Oliver for getting together with Venetia. So Oliver explains that he only went out to check if she was okay, but she got the wrong end of the stick, so she misunderstood his intentions and that's why she tried to kiss him. She's got the wrong end of the stick. Her boss wasn't criticizing her work, but just merely offering constructive feedback. It seems like Steve has got the wrong end of the stick about the project timeline. The deadline is actually next week. Before jumping to conclusions, make sure you don't have the wrong end of the stick in this complex situation. Wrong end. Wrong end. Of the stick. Of the stick. Wrong end of the stick. Wrong end of the stick. Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number 8. Hammered. Well, why didn't you tell me? I, just, I thought it'd be nicer not to. She was hammered, probably doesn't remember. The slang term hammered is often used to describe someone who is extremely drunk, usually due to the consumption of alcohol. This is a hammer. If you're hammered, you're so drunk that it looks like the alcohol literally hammered you. Oliver says that Venetia was hammered, so super drunk and probably doesn't remember the incident. The word hammered we usually use with the verbs be or get. She got so hammered at the party that she couldn't even remember what happened the next day. He regretted getting hammered the night before, when he woke up with a terrible hangover. They spent the evening laughing and having fun, but by the end of the night, they were both completely hammered. 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 Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number 9. Shit stir. She's so embarrassing. And fucking Farley, what a little shit stirrer. Well, someone has to entertain us all. Right. Okay, so here is the shit. Now, shit in this situation is a trouble, drama, something negative. So, by stirring it, you create it and you make the situation even worse. A shit stirrer is someone who likes to create chaos and drama and to provoke other people for reactions. Now, please be careful because this phrase is a very vulgar slang, so definitely do not use it in a formal setting. Felix calls Farley a shit stirrer because he was the one who gossiped and created some unnecessary drama. John is known as a bit of a shit stirrer at the office. He always seems to thrive on spreading gossip and creating drama. Be cautious around Sarah. She has a reputation of being a real shit stirrer often instigating conflicts among her friends. Whenever there is a disagreement, Jake tends to act as a shit stirrer, escalating the situation rather than promoting resolution. Stirrer. Stirrer. Shit stirrer. Shit stirrer. Now pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number 10. To take up a notch. Okay, now it's time to take things up a notch. Um, 
Okay, we have someone here who is a very talented singer. He's your best friend and mine, Oliver Quick. To take up a notch means to increase the effort or intensity of a situation. For example, you're cooking a meal and it already tastes pretty good with just salt and pepper, but then you decide to take it up a notch so make it even better with a special spice blend. In this scene, we can see the group is having fun, listening to music and singing karaoke when Farley announces that it is time to take it up a notch. So it is time to bring something even more fun. All right, well, you can use this phrase with a specific word as an object, or you can use the words like it or things. The company needs to take this marketing campaign up a notch to attract a broader audience and enhance brand visibility. His performance was already impressive, but he managed to take it up a notch by incorporating a surprise element that wowed the audience. The party is enjoyable, but we can take things up a notch by bringing in a professional DJ and setting up a dance floor. Notch. Notch. Up a notch. Up a notch. It's time to take things up a notch. It's time to take things up a notch. Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. All right, and the last one, number 11, to beetle off. Did you tell me you're an only child, Oliver? No, I've always talked about my sisters. All right, well, I must have, must have forgotten. <laughs> I'm not surprised if he didn't. He always wanted to be an only child, always beetling off by himself. Oh, I bet, yeah, yeah, I bet. The to beetle off is a British slang that means to leave suddenly and in a hurry. So this is a beetle and imagine that once you see it, it just suddenly flies away. It escapes. Oliver's parents explained that he always wanted to be an only child and never really played much with his sisters. He always beetled off by himself, so he always left to be on his own. In this phrase, beetle is a verb and you can change it according to the tense that you want. I often beetle off from social gatherings when they become too overwhelming. Last night, she beetled off without giving any explanation, leaving everyone puzzled. While the argument escalated, he was beetling off silently to avoid getting involved. Off, off, beetle, beetle, beetle off, beetle off. Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Okay, and now it is time for you to do some exercises and check how well you understood the material. And remember, if you need extra time, you can always pause the video. Select the most appropriate phrase for each given description or situation.
All right, now that we've picked up our different phrases and idioms from this movie, you can take it up a notch and show off your new vocabulary next time you speak English. Don't beetle off too fast from our lesson and leave a message down below in the comment section. Tell us what you thought about our lesson. Write down some sentences and we will help you practice. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to never miss a fun and quick English lesson with PDQ English.